Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials video 136. It's on half-life and radioactive decay. To model that, my daughter and I started rolling some dice. We had 32 dice in the cup, and what she would do is she would roll the dice, and then she'd pull all of a certain number out. So in this first simulation, she's going to pull all the ones out. And so you put those to the side. That's generation one, and now generation two, and generation three, and generation four. Now when you get to the fourth generation, she's hit her first half-life. What does that mean? Well, if there were 32 to start, that's the amount of time it takes for half of those to decay. And so that would be 16. So 16 have decayed right here. So she's going to keep doing that. And so if we watch what happens in the rest of the simulation, you're not pulling as many dice because there's not as many left. And eventually they've all decayed after 19 generations. But what you can see is that the half-life is consistent. So this was to 16 and then to 8 and then to 4 and then to 2 and then to 1. And so radioactive nuclei will decay. What does that mean? They're going to kick off some kind of a particle. It could be alpha, beta, or gamma. And then they're going to form a new, usually more stable, nuclei. And so in this radioactive decay, mass and energy are conserved. We've talked about that in, in previous videos. But what we're going to talk about here is what is the probability of that decay occurring? Well, it's chance. So we never know when the next one's going to decay, but what we can use is the law of large numbers to calculate the half-life. The half-life is the amount of time it takes for half of the radioactive nuclei to decay. In other words, if this represents all of the radioactive uh, nuclei, that would be the time it takes for half of them to decay. Now we've got all these ones left, and so we'd have another half-life like that, and we can just keep going and going and going and going like that. And so there's an equation we can use to figure out how many are going to decay at each generation. And so delta n, which is the change in the radioactive nuclei, so n is going to be our radioactive nuclei, so the change in n is minus, because we're losing those nuclei, so negative decay constant, I'll get to that in a second, times n, which is is the number of radioactive nuclei times time. And so if we kind of work backwards for that, in this simulation here, our time was advancing one generation after another. And so that's going to be one each time. What was our decay constant? Well, it's one in six. So it's a one sixth probability that you're going to roll a one and that that one's going to decay. And so we could model that. I'll just use a quick little spreadsheet to do that. So at time zero, how many radioactive nuclei did we have? Well, our n value value was 32. So let me walk you through this formula. What is our time going to be? It's going to be 1. What's going to be our n value? It's 32. So 1 times 32. And then what's our decay constant? It's 1 sixth. And so it's going to be negative 1 sixth times 32. So what is that value? It's going to be negative 5.33. Now if we look how many actually decayed, it's 6. But it's close to negative 5.33. This is what it would predict to be. And this is what we actually got with a really small number of dice. Now how do you do the next one? Well, what we have to do is we have to take that 32. These ones decayed, so we're going to take 32 minus 5.33, and that's my n value for the next generation. And so now what do I do? I go back to this formula again. So it's going to be t, which is 1, times my new n, which is going to be 26.67, times my decay constant, which remains constant, and so what I'm going to get is negative 4.45. Now, how does that match up? Oh, it's pretty close to this. So then we subtract that value like that, and we could just do this over and over again. So right here on the right is going to be what we would predict to occur and this is what actually occurred in this little simulation and the number of dice are so small compared to the number of nuclei in a sample but if you look at my data the green line represents the actual data that we find the red line represents the predicted and so you can see that it matches up pretty quickly what would happen if we change the decay constant what if we change it from one six to one half so how would you do that in the modeling instead of pulling ones out she's going to pull the ones threes and fives out so what's going to happen? Well, it's going to happen more quickly. So more of them are going to decay at each point, and so it's going to take less time for all of them to decay. In other words, our half-life has gotten much, much shorter. And so you should be able to calculate half-life. So how long would it be for half of them to decay? You can see it's going to be somewhere around four generations. And so when you look at a curve, the first thing you want to do is figure out how long does it take to go from 100 
radioactive nuclei to 50% of that. And so if I look across here, it took one year for 50% of them to decay. So let's watch the next generation. So now we should go to 25. You can see it's consistent, one year, one year, one year. And so you could say for this, perfect model, it's going to be a half-life of one year. But on a test, you're more likely to get something like this. Calculate the half-life decay of carbon-14. So if you're given this curve right here, we go from 100 to 50. So you, you count across like that. So this is 50% of the carbon-14. And then you just read the time on the bottom. So if this right here is 10,000 years, what is our radioactive half-life? It's around 6,000 years. But let's keep going. So now let's go down to 25% and you can see it's around 12,000. And so it's pretty consistent over time. Now each form of radioactive decay is going to kick off a different particle. Let's start with alpha particle. An alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons. So if we look at the alpha decay of uranium-238, let's make sure that the mass is conserved. And so mass on the left side is 238, mass on the right side is 238, so we're fine there. Let's make sure charge is conserved, 92 positive charge on the left, 92 positive charge on the right, so that's conserved as well. Now what's the half-life of uranium-238 decay? It's 4.47 billion years. It takes a huge amount of time for just half of the uranium-238 to decay. But there's so many nuclei that we can actually measure this, and this is how we determine the age of the Earth. Let's Let's look at beta decay. In beta decay, we convert a neutron to a proton. We also give off an electron and an electron antineutrino. So if we look across the top, mass is conserved, 14 and 14, and charge is conserved. On the left side, we've got one po six positive charges. On the right side, seven positive, one negative, and so we've got six positive charges on the right as well. What's the half-life of carbon-14 decay? It's going to be 5,730 years. So we had shown that just a few slides ago. It was around 6,000 for a half-life. And we can use this to date living material. And then we could look at gamma decay. Remember in gamma decay, we're just giving off these gamma rays. We're going from baryon-137 that is charged to baryon-137 that's not charged. And so we're conserving charge and conserving mass. What's the half-life? 2.6 minutes, so it's really, really short. And so half-life is going to change depending on that decay constant, but you should be able to take a graph like this, figure out the half-life, and I hope that was helpful.